shipping today. The Nikon Z30. Let's explore. Good morning, everybody. We are testing out the Z30 in thick fog. So good to see you. Now, what are we doing here by the river besides trying not to fall in? We are playing with the brand new Nikon Z30. I'm going to share with you my experience with the Z30 so far. We're going to talk about I.O. We're going to talk about the sensor. We're going to talk about the flip out screen. And we're going to talk about the fact that, well, there's no EVF. And does that matter at all when we live in a world where billions of people are taking photos with their phones out here like this? Well, no, for those people, it does not matter at all. This is a highly affordable camera. So let's jump into my first week or so with the Z30. This is the Z30, and one of my favorite aspects of this camera is the fact that it has a tally light, a big red light, so I very clearly know that I'm recording. Now we're using the on-camera mic. I'm holding the camera about two feet from my face, and we've got low wind because, well, we've got this crazy fog that you can see over my shoulder here. So low wind should make this sound pretty reasonable because I don't have the dead cats that you can put in the hot shoe over the two microphones that Nikon has installed on the top of this camera. I definitely think if you're gonna be using this in the field, you definitely need that. Is it capable? And I think for the audience that it's aimed at, which is content creators and influencers and people who spend a lot of time with their phone, they just wanna pick it up, have a screen shoot and they're done, It'll do all of that. It can face detect you, no problem. You can take over 20 megapixel stills, no problem. And you can attach any Z lens you want, no problem. You get 4K in video. You get slow motion in video. So another usage of this camera is that it's great for B-roll. It's great as a second camera. Super light, super affordable. I've, I've actually just got it in my jacket here and it fits there really, really well, and it does the job of capturing me while I'm capturing with whatever gear. And you might just have one sort of flagship camera, whatever you call flagship for you, and then this is absolutely a super duper affordable way of getting B-roll and other shots. Of course, there go the rowers, they're going right over there, but of course, you're able to get this thing for sub $1,000 in the USA. So it makes it a great second camera, B-roll camera, and of course, Nikon are selling it as a webcam that you can use for live streaming and all sorts of other things. And the fact that you can get your signal... <laughs> We're using the on-camera mic right now, so it might not be working particularly well, but the fact that we can get the signal and the power through a USB-C port, I think is absolutely fantastic. It really fits in well in your kit as a B camera, and that's where it fits in for me. I'm going to start some live streaming, more regular live streaming. And for me, it's going to be one of the studio cameras. And ultimately, I may just create a whole kit of Z30s, which are just set up as the studio. Again, have a very affordable camera that's sort of permanently set up. There we are on the small rig, little mini handheld tripod selfie stick, all in one with built-in remote. I'm going this way. This is still Nikon's competent level of photography. You get their color science, you get their profiles, you get their sensors, which they spend so long perfecting so that they work super well. And this sensor has now been perfected through the Z50, through the ZFC, and we have got thousands and thousands of users out there extremely happy with those cameras and that sensor. Now, of course, like all of those other cameras, it uses SD cards. SD cards can be found everywhere and they're super affordable. That makes sense. And the Z30 has a fair few kits, depending on where you are in the world. There's body only, there's body with the 16 to 50, and there's the twin lens kit, which is the 16 to 50 and the 50 to 250. Now that gives you a lot of options, a lot of reach. And if you didn't have any of this sort of gear before, I might even consider that twin lens kit because that, that lens can be used with other cameras in the future because of course the Z mount is, is the Z mount across everything. And look, I think one of the biggest tricks of all of these APS-C cameras from Nikon, the ZFC, and I made an amazing video putting something like 30, over 30 different lenses on that camera. 
is that you can mount any of the Z lenses, any of the F lenses, and a whole array of adaptable other lenses from Canon. You can even do Sony E-mount lenses and so on. So this is, there it is, there is the beautiful Nikon Z mount. And here we are putting on the fully pro, the 14 to 24. There it is there. I don't know if you can see that moving there. But that's what I love about this camera. It's something like 700 US dollars and you have got access to the Z mount. This is the sort of camera that you could mount under a car and you wouldn't be super worried about it. It's giving you everything Z in a great package and you can put any lens on it. You can put the 800 PF on it. You can put the brand new released 400 lens, any of them. And I think that's one of the most powerful parts of all of these cameras. The ergonomics continue to be extraordinary. So this is, this is still a very small package, but look how that fits in my hand. There's still plenty of room and I'm not actually touching this lens. From some other manufacturers, they make small cameras and they make the grips tiny. And so you just can't hold onto them and you can't put on large lenses like this. And I still feel there is not enough set out there from the pundits about ergonomics. Ergonomics is still a critical thing if you're actually using your camera daily and it's in your hand for hours. It's basically got a full size grip and that's awesome. Along with all the buttons, all the normal buttons that we would expect to have here, they're all there as well. So there's the articulating screen. Obviously it does that, it does that, and you can close it if you wanna just shoot completely blind, <laughs> which is kind of an interesting way to go. There are some kits around the world, I'm not sure if they're in Australia, but in some territories, you can get this small rig little tripod which doubles as a selfie stick don't want to drop it in the Yarra River famous for being brown also it comes with this remote which is a Bluetooth connects and you can start and stop recording but also a little tripod so you can sit it on your tables and as I said there's some kits that come with this as well as a little microphone and then you've got literally everything you need to get going that's happening in different territories around the world in the next two clips, I try to illustrate what Final Cut Pro can do with voice isolation. This is modern algorithms using deep learning, trying to pull the voice out of the background. In this case, I have the setting set to 50%, but this is very useful in a situation like this and can really change the background noise. All right, so here we are at Federation Square. We're shooting on the Z30. We're using the on-camera mic and I'm two meters, six feet from the camera. All right, so here we are at Federation Square. We're shooting on the Z30. We're using the on-camera mic and I'm two meters, six feet from the camera. I'm mic'd up and I'm mic'd up here with my Rode. And of course you can use the Rode wireless mics on this. And what we'll do is we'll throw the road on there right now. I will come back to this spot, we'll put the road on there, and obviously the sound is going to be very different. Let's give it a go though. But I, I get, let's see what happens here. That is with the road mic plugged in, and I'm expecting that's much better sound. So it's definitely worth thinking about either an on-camera mic, or if you do want to get more and more distance from your camera, but you still want it to sound fabulous, well, of course, this is a really great way to do it because, you know, I can get 50, 100 meters away and it still sounds great. More pictures. And I'll tell you another interesting thing. I can see here I'm probably 10 meters, 30 feet, and I can see the tally light. I can see that it's flashing, which either means the battery's running low or I'm running out of space on the card. So this will cut out at any second. But it's kind of cool that you can see that at such a distance. Now, to me, really, there's only perhaps one thing that some people, when they're considering this versus, say, a Z5 or a Z6, which are also very affordable cameras, there's only one difference when it comes to the ports that we have here on the side, and that is there is no headphone jack. The recording jack, micro HDMI, and the USB-C, which gives you power and allows you to webcam using Nikon's webcam utility. I think for the audience that it's aimed at, it doesn't matter at all. I think a lot of that audience, they're just gonna use the on-camera mics. And of course, everything's balanced for when you're using your on-camera mic. You can turn on auto mic levels and it will just react and it will behave very, very well. And that's what people who are starting this sort of thing 
that's all they want to worry about. But actually you can monitor the sound and you can monitor it visually. And you can see the levels that are coming into the camera and you can see if they're going into the reds. Is this camera for you? With a camera like this and Sony make cameras like this for example, is there's no EVF. So you've got to decide whether you can shoot without an EVF. Now we all pretty much take photos with our phones which means we shoot without an EVF. I think we're totally capable of doing it. And this thing fits in your pocket. So it's got all sorts of really awesome usages. Another one that we're thinking of using it for is throwing, throwing it on the gimbal, on the Ronin. It's super light. I presume it'll be stabilised super well and it'll be just a great action cam. And because of its price point, you know, and its weight, you're a little less worried about it. As an entry into the Z mount, awesome. It's this, the ZFC, or the Z50. This is the most affordable option. If a tally light is important to you, I like it. I like being able to see that, and you can see it at quite a distance, so that's helpful. Otherwise, the size, weight, and price, the ability to slide a camera of, of this capability into your pocket and mount any Z mount lens on it, I think that's pretty awesome to have access to the mount, yet this is so tiny. Of course, battery life's another thing you've got to think about. I've been out for a day, I've been shooting for quite a while, and my guess is, unless you're going to USB-C some reserve power from a battery, you've got to take in your pocket probably two batteries. With stabilised lenses, it's stabilised. It doesn't have in-body image stabilisation, so if you're shooting with non-stabilised lenses, there is electronic stabilisation. So do let me know, what do you think of the Nikon Z30? It's been so good to see you, and if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again, so please do subscribe, please share, and please like, and I'm going to stop staring into the sun. It is so bright. Okay, bye for now.